Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mateo, and I like to draw. I wouldn't normally be doing this, but my sister Izzy has challenged me to share my art or something. Anyway, in these videos, I will show you how I draw some stuff, and hopefully it will inspire you to do the same. You can draw along if you feel like it, so get a pencil out or something. This is Draw With Mateo. I'm actually pretty excited about this video. Not because of the whole drawing in front of other people part. Actually, definitely not because of that, but because I thought today we could draw my best buddy Z-Blob. Wanna give it a shot? We'll start with his head. And yeah, I know you're probably thinking he's all head, but we're actually gonna draw him in his mech form. Cool? Otherwise, this tutorial would be like two seconds long. His armor is pretty massive. When I drew him for the first time in my comics, I knew he'd be going on wild missions where this armor would come in handy. Back then, I had no idea we'd end up going on dangerous missions of our own in the dream world. We can make a little more of his torso, and this is basically a slanted square. Uh, I think it's called the trapezoid, actually. We can use that same kind of shape, but on its side, for the shoulder pads. One goes on each side. Then we can make a pair of smaller ones as well. His arm is pretty much a tube that leads into a simple box shape. We can draw a second box as well, and that's basically going to be his hand. But I think we can wait a little bit to fill in those details. It's important to get an overall feel of the figure first. In the meantime, we can do the same thing for his other arm. If you know Z, you know he doesn't usually have arms. But when disaster strikes, his mech form comes in clutch when he needs to punch a pudding pirate or slap a banana bandit. Uh, sorry. Those are from my comics. In real life, when a pack of Grimspawn are closing in on you, it's nice to have some hands, at the very least. I'm gonna add a little triangle here. It kind of makes him look like he's bent forward, ready for action, like a dangerously handsome superhero. This next shape will connect his torso to his legs, and it basically looks like a home plate in baseball, if you play baseball. I don't, but I know that because of Cooper. Now we need two more squares. Honestly, when I was first starting to draw, I was pretty intimidated. I just stuck to little doodles in class. But once I noticed that all drawings are kind of just made out of simple shapes, it wasn't so scary anymore. And I started to dive into my comics, which I also draw during class. Hey, if Miss Putnam was your math teacher, you'd be looking for a distraction too. We can use our tubes again for his legs. And they will also connect into a couple of squares. A smaller one, and a larger one as we get towards his feet. Next, we will use something called foreshortening. It's just a fancy way of saying we're gonna draw something that looks like it's coming towards us. It took some practice for me to learn this, so if you're having trouble with it, maybe just watch me do it and then give it another shot. Let's do the same thing for Z's other leg too, with the squares and stuff. This time, the foreshortening will come out to the left a little bit. This will be the top of the foot. Here's a rectangle for the front and another rectangle along the side. This helps the whole thing feel like it's a little bit more 3D. So that's the basics of Z-Blob in his mech form. Now we can add some details. Let's start with the eyes and add a couple of bubbles too. There's no mouth because he's a man of action. And also, I kind of just understand what he's thinking. We're just on that level, so there's no need for a mouth. He has an armor piece around his neck that comes down onto his chest. It's kind of that same home plate shape that's around his waist. His shoulders are actually just a tad more rounded. So as we retrace our lines to make them darker, we can fix that a little bit. He's got some stickers on the front. and his armor comes in at the sides, like this. Uh, I'm gonna try that again. We can go back over his shoulder pads and add some bubbles to his arms. There's kind of an indent in his armor here, 
which forms a band around his wrist. And now we can work on his hand. How about we start with a half circle and connect it to a square? That'll be his thumb. This spot here can be his fingers. And now we can add some arch lines for his knuckles. And there's a circle right about here. There's one hand clenched into a fist and ready to rumble with any Grim Keeper that dares to look at him the wrong way, which basically happens every time we leave our landing in the dream world. I wonder where Grim Keepers came from. Were they dreamed up by someone? Or did the Nightmare King originally create them? I guess the only other option would be that somebody dreamcrafted one. But who would do something like that? Whenever me and my friends dreamcraft, it's either to make something cool or it's out of necessity. A giant beast trying to lock you into its chest cage is definitely not as cool as it sounds. And I don't see why there would ever be a need for one either. Anyways, we are done with the top half. Maybe we can add some lines around his waist. He also has another sticker right about here. Maybe darken some of these lines and add some bubbles to his legs. Down here on his ankle, there's a circular joint that allows his foot to bend. So we can add that in and darken the rest of the lines around his foot. We can do the same thing for his other leg, darken the lines and add some more bubbles. <laughs> he is a blob after all, and we can't forget about the circle joint on his ankle. Hey, do you want to try playing with the lighting a bit? We can use hatching, which is basically just shading to show where the light is coming from in the picture. So we just kind of fill certain areas in, just like that. To know which areas to shade in, we first need to choose where the light is coming from. Then we can shade on the opposite side. So let's say the light is coming from the left. That means certain areas on the right would be cast in shadow. Those are the areas we would fill in with hatching. So I'm gonna take a moment to do that a little bit. Cool. The last thing to do would be to set him on the ground. We can draw a line behind his feet and off to his sides. And add in some grass and stuff here and there. It's okay for the grass to overlap his feet sometimes too. And yeah, that's my best friend Z-Blob in his awesome mech form. He's so cool. Well, I hope you liked that or at least felt just a little inspired to try it out yourself. Izzy has told me to say this. <clears throat> Your art doesn't need to be perfect, just as long as you have fun doing it and you like it yourself. Join me in another video for another drawing. There, Izzy! I did it! Are you happy now? <laughs>